everybody, I am back with another proverb. I will narrate a story which is related to a proverb. You just have to listen to the story and try to guess the proverb which is related to it. So come on, let's get started. James and his dreams In a misty land on a calm seashore, there lived a boy by the name of James. He lived with his parents in a small bamboo house. His father was a bamboo cutter. He used to help his father cut bamboo in the forest nearby and sell it in the market across the sea. After his long journey, he used to return in the evening with his father. He would be exhausted, but his mother would cheer him up by treating him to a bowl of cereals and a glass of milk. Even though the family was not very well off, they lived happily and were content enough. James had the habit of dreaming whenever his father had given him a holiday from work. On one such Sunday afternoon, James was having a stroll on the seaside after lunch. His mother had asked him to bring some fish for dinner after his stroll. As he was walking on the soft and warm sand, he noticed a pair of scissors fallen down. He wondered who might these scissors belong to. He searched far and wide for the owner of the scissors but could not find anyone. He decided to keep it with himself and take it home. He was excited to show off his new possession to his parents and friends. So, with excitement, he started rushing back home. The scorching heat of the sun made him sleepy and his pace of running became much slower. He heard someone call out to him from the waves. He turned towards the sound and found a fish calling out to him. He rushed towards the fish and it claimed that the scissors he was holding was the fish's possession. He also told James that he could keep it, but its speciality was that he could make anything real by just cutting it out with the scissors on a piece of paper. James thanked the fish and rushed back home. After he reached, he took out a sheet of golden colored paper and cut out the shape of a castle on it. Suddenly, the castle came into life. After this success, he began to make many more of his desires come true. He made gardens, parks, birds and different antiques to decorate the castle. He also designed different clothes of silk for himself and his parents. His friends congratulated him on his success and he felt extremely proud of himself. Suddenly, he felt hungry and a thought came to his mind. He wanted to rush to his parents and into his castle. Then he would have lots of delicious delicacies and eat to his heart's content. He ran excitedly back home, but he was shocked to see that the magnificent golden castle had been turned into the regular small bamboo house. His parents were in their same old clothes. His mother was in the kitchen, 
making some croissants as a special meal that day. His father was sharpening his knife to cut bamboo the next day. Hearing the commotion, James' mother ran out of the house from the kitchen. She inquired him about why he had come late. James, in absolute shock and disappointment, narrated the entire incident to his mother and to his father, who was shocked to hear this. There was complete silence for a few minutes. They kept staring at each other's faces. Finally, their mother broke the silence. She said, James, there is no magic in the world. If you want to achieve these riches and luxury, you have to work hard and have a vision in your mind. Only then will you succeed and be able to earn all these. You have wasted your time and instead you could have done something productive during that time. James hung his head low with shame. Finally, he lifted his head and said, I am so sorry, mother. I have learnt my lesson. From now on, I will never daydream ever again. His mother smiled, but she suddenly remembered something. James, have you brought the fish I asked you to bring for supper? James scratched his head and replied apologetically. I am so sorry, mother. I forgot to bring it while I was daydreaming. His mother looked at him angrily and said, James, now go to the seaside and catch some fish fast. It is nearing supper time and don't go to daydream once again. James nodded his head silently and left for the seashore. He repented his actions deeply and had learned his lesson. He was not going to daydream from then on anymore. This story relates to the phrase don't build castles in the air, which means that we should not dream of the least possible things in our life or that have the least chance of happening. Instead, we should spend that time to do productive tasks which can help us to get what we want or desire. We can use this proverb in a sentence. I would like to give an example. Lucas said, My brother always builds castles in the air and does not help me do any work. I hope he has learned about the proverb, don't build castles in the air. I release new videos every alternate Friday. Don't forget to watch the videos and enjoy. If you liked this video, then you can click on the subscribe button right under the video so that you can be notified whenever I launch a new video. I will be back with a new video filled with lots of entertainment, fun and awareness. Thank you!